So welcome to this video. Um, we are talking about water and that's a big one because and I'm afraid this video might become a bit longer. Water is a bit of a mystery to us. Like over 70% of our planet is water and only very, very little of this is accessible and um, fresh water. So most of the water is salt water or it's locked in ice caps or locked underground and it's not accessible. Um, many people grew up with this perception that water is a, like an endless resource. And in a way it's like, yeah, the water goes around and around. You know, we, we drink it and uh, evaporate through sweat or pee or it just goes out from the body uh, just by <laughs> exhaling. Moisture from my body goes into the air and maybe somebody else breathes that moisture in and becomes part of their body. But it's not that simple. And you'd be surprised that if we want to tackle, uh, for example, I don't know, if, if you have a problem with refugees coming to places, for example, to Finland, you really should think um, about water. And you might be interested in this video because um, was just about to get some water from the well here. So I'll give you a little bit of info about water. So the human body, depending on the person, is something between 50, 60, 55, 60 percent and 70 something percent of water. Most of this water stays inside of us for about two weeks and then it's circulated around. Um, unfortunately, water doesn't go round and around as we think that it does. But it goes, but it's not that simple. So sometimes it might disappear for thousands of years underground. Um, and also with current phenomena related to the potential climate change. Um, I say potential because I, I think it's splitting people uh, for, for no good reason. And we have more urgent issues going on. So like there are places with very little water and there are places with lots of water so here in finland the demand of water is less than 10 percent of what is available to us so we have a lot more water than what we need um, there are places in the world where the demand of water is beyond 80 percent of the available resources or even beyond 100 percent which means people have to import water and um <sighs> And that's, that's causing, causing troubles. So when you look at the history of, of uh, conflicts related to water, and um, if you go, I don't know, back to 3,000 year, uh, 5,000 years, like the recorded conflicts that we have um, start somewhere there. Over half of the conflicts about water <laughs> are since 2006. So... In the last 5,000 years, over half of the conflicts of the non-conflicts about water have been since 2006. Um, water scarcity or scarcity, scarcity, water stress, uh, is something that becomes more of a problem. So we have places that have no water at certain times that used to have, used to have water at certain times. We also have places that um, have too much water. So we have floods and droughts. Um, and we cannot count on the water being available as it used to be. At the same time, we have a growth in population and we have um, a change in lifestyle. So we have people who want more and more things. And when I look at, um, like here, this place that people call Finland, also here, an average human being needs one to seven liters of water per day just to stay alive. You know, that's like what we need for survival. Water is one of our six survival priorities. Um, the average water consumption, like what we get through the water tap, right? The, um, you know, what, what goes through the meter um, and that we pay for, water that we use for cooking, cleaning, washing, uh, drinking, um, you know, making our laundry and cleaning the house and, and our dishes and whatever, that's about 150 liters per day per person. So that's a lot in comparison to many other places. 
and also it's not a big issue because we have a lot of water. A bigger issue might be that we need a lot of energy to heat this water. And where does this energy come from? That's locally interesting. But internationally, globally interesting is the water that is not coming through the tap and that is the water that is embedded in the products that we are consuming, um, the, the water that comes with our lifestyle. And when we look at this water, we are, <laughs> we are at 3,874 liters per day per person. So that's somewhere between 18,000 and 24,000 liters of water to produce one kilo of raw chocolate. Uh, similar numbers for meat, um, cotton is like, what was it, the t-shirt, 2,500 liters. Um, so, so the list is pretty, pretty long. And um, it's very impressive. So when, when we look at our global water consumption, something about 70% of our global water consumption goes into irrigation, agriculture. And when we look at the existing conflicts on this world, water plays a big role. Like there is um, fertile areas are a lot more fought about and people seem to be fighting a lot more about water than they are fighting about oil. And, well, it's, it's no surprise. So, when we look at our global situation and look at the way we are treating water, it's really something that is, uh, I'm, I'm pretty concerned about this. Like, for example, when we look at what kind of water we put down our drains, we are having mostly grey water. Grey water is water that basically is not going down the toilet. Grey water is, you know, water from washing, from cooking. Um, and depending on the, the, the products that you use for the washing, if you use biodegradable detergents, um, the, the water, the grey water, can actually be still very useful, like into the, in, in gardens, for example, or even in um, other uses, like flushing the toilet. So why not flush water down the toilet that you have used first in the shower? The thing is that black water is very hard to clean. So black water is everything from the toilet. And black water is pretty hard to clean. And what we're doing is we are mixing grey water with black water. And then we have to treat all the water so we have mostly gray water, a little bit of black water. We're mixing them both and that turns everything into black water. And we need to clean all that water as if it were black water because it is black water. And that means we have to use a lot more energy, uh, a lot more resources to clean our water. And um, at the same time, we are, we are flushing, you know, really good compost down the toilet. So a really good way to, to save water um, would be to uh, start with the compost toilet and the um, and, 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 and have a grey water capture under the sink, right? So collect the grey water, uh, avoid black water. And why should we be concerned about saving water? Uh, in a place like Finland, we have so much lakes, so much rivers. Um, we it doesn't appear that we need to save water and i think that's true for the water that we go that goes through the meter the the, t the water from the tab we have plenty of this still i feel it's a bit weird to be dependent on um yeah on a system which is very complex so the the water pipes system the water supply system is very complex and of course, it needs more resources than we really have available and also energy that we have available. And it's a fragile system. And um, so I'm very happy about this well here. So uh, living off grids now since August. And yeah, water was a very big concern about this. So very happy that this water here is good. And um, looking back at the at the embedded water, the, the virtual water in, in our consumption. That's the part where we really need to work on ourselves. Um, because this is water that comes, a lot of this water it comes does not come from Finland. A lot of this water comes from places where water is really an issue. 
uh, give you an example. Um, avocado, for example. Yeah, we it's it's allowed here still in Finland to um, to buy avocado. It's advertised, so it's legal and advertised. Certainly more part of the problem than part of the solution. So, um, yeah, I, I feel a bit guilty because I have been buying avocado in my life. So, um, my apologies to the people in um, Chile and I don't know Palestine or Spain or so where water is not so available through through rain for irrigating um, the, the plants and the fields where um, for example in Chile water is stolen by the big um, agriculture companies to irrigate the avocado plantations and that's water being taken away from small farmers local villages and uh, families who have to fight for their water and in Chile I think to my knowledge um, water has now become privatized so it's like um, uh, yeah there the, are the people dying because of water of, of our consumption here um, we have the the flea markets full with clothes here clothing we have no really good reason to produce any more clothing um, and, and the same goes for many other products. Like my, my favorite example is spoons and cups. Like we are thinking how to produce them more sustainably. Um, at the same time, we have more spoons and cups than people on this planet and have no proper reason to produce more spoons and cups. And of course, for producing spoons and cups and t-shirts and whatever, we need water. And that's not just water for the industrial process, it's water for uh, the energy production, for cooling uh, the power plants, for creating steam in the power plants. And in Europe, about 40%, over 40% of the fresh water is used in the energy production. So what can we do? What can we do? Like, I, we see that water is a driving factor behind uh, migration. Um, behind conflicts. Uh, we see that the way we treat water is a driving factor behind um, dying of species. Um, pollution goes, carries with water, microplastic from our laundry goes with the water around the world into the oceans. Water is everywhere and um, it might carry information of, of, our, um, of our way of living. And like when we um, when we look at where the water is used, and we can calculate water footprints. That's like I, I put some links down in this video in the description where you can um, calculate water footprint or look at the water footprint of different products. Um, again, meat consumption, meat production, um, the production of fodder for um, for the meat production. Uh, again a big 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 player like if you really want to do something you should uh, look at the footprint of the food that you eat um, yeah I don't want to tell anyone what to do and what not to do uh, best look for yourself understand that we need to do something and we need drastic changes the full moon full stop is a very good tool for this also again uh, link to this or you find some videos in my channel about the full moon full stop very good tool to find solutions for your own life um, there's a lot more about water and what I find maybe the most interesting is that to our understanding water is everywhere where life is and if you think that water the same molecules that are now here in my eyeball right these water molecules they have been around forever they have just been I don't know in the clouds in the seas underground um, in in this well for sure <laughs> some of these molecules have been in this well here and yeah and they might have been um, I don't know in a pile of dinosaur poo <laughs> for all I know yeah, so, and if we imagine that all the water molecules somehow, um, you know, when, when every snowflake is different, 
and ice crystals from water that has kind of experienced different things, they also look different. So there is indications that water carries information. And I think that's that's quite quite um, quite a, quite a big one. So when we look at our global situation, climate change, sure, is a big thing, but just one symptom, uh, one of many symptoms: conflicts, um, mass migrations, dying of species. Uh, these are other symptoms of. I, I guess I guess our lifestyle the way we believe we can do things and I think water is is a place where we have to start where we have to look at really really take a close look because we need water and I think water needs us we are impacting deep into the oceans know very little about the depth of the oceans and we are polluting water um, we are cutting lands and have runoff water um, and when i look at the 3874 liters that every average fin is using per day and look at the one to seven liters one to seven liters that we really need then I know that there's a lot that we can do and yeah that's how often do we wash our clothes what products do we buy do we buy new products um, yeah. many questions many questions <laughs> and then we are <laughs> You know that's a funny thing like but that's a that subject for another video because you know in in our list of survival priorities the six survival priorities food water air shelter health and community mobility is not one of those and we use a lot of energy and resources to um to ensure our mobility um and among others we are moving tons and tons and tons of snow so that we are able to drive our, I don't know, 2,000 kilo vehicles with 1.2 people in each of them. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we have so many possibilities to do things. So nice, so nice. I get some more water now and um, yeah, thank you. And also thank you for subscribing and very much also for sharing this video. If you watch that long, um, Thank you so much for that and looking forward also put feedback down uh, there's space to comment and maybe you know something better than i do or have some questions um or share what you think about water and yeah thank you bye bye